So I've been playing around with some FPGA development stuff um, with some signal processing projects and I wanted to expand to be able to work on some more projects and so I needed to upgrade my board to something bigger uh, with a bigger FPGA on it and so I found this guy which is the Mimus A7 chip um, or Mimus A7 board from Numato Labs and you can get it for about $180. It's got the Xilinx Artix 750T FPGA on it, which is a fairly large FPGA. Um, it's got enough resources in here to implement a soft core microblaze processor and still have plenty of resources left over to play with for other hardware. So um, this board also has like HDMI, Ethernet. I'm really excited about these easy to use headers that hook up to the IO pins. Um, buttons, switches, LEDs, seven segment. Like it just seems like a really solid board. Um, it even has like a micro SD slot. So this seems like a really solid development board. And as I've started playing around with it, I have hit a couple interesting roadblocks. Now these FPGAs are often programmed or um, configured over a port called JTAG, which is a, actually a really cool protocol. If you haven't heard of it, it basically allows you to pause and debug and peer into, like peer inside of what's happening in the chip as it's running. Um, so that's actually quite, quite cool. Um, but the problem is you need a special JTAG connector in order for it to interface with Xilinx's Vivado, uh, Vivado design suite. And that cable costs, if you buy it from them, two to $300, or you can buy some smaller versions for like 50. But even so, that's kind of an expensive cable, and I'd rather not buy it if I don't have to. So as I was digging around on the Mimus A7 website, they told me about this other software that they've created called, what is it, Tanagra. And um, basically, it's a bitstream loader that's specific to this board. So what it allows you to do is I can generate a hardware bitstream in Vivado and then take that bitstream and load it into this Tanagra thing and it'll program this board for me. Um, and so that allows me to at least for now get around having to need that JTAG cable but I think ultimately I'm going to have to buy it anyway because this software will let me run regular bit streams on this. And so as you can see, I created a very simple hardware configuration that just hooks up these dip switches to the LEDs. And so like I have access to all of the hardware in here and I can, I can use it, but if I want to implement like a soft core processor like Microblaze on here, that's going to have to, as far as I can tell, that's going to have to be done through Vivado and their new software development side, Vitus. And so I think I need to buy that cable just so that the integration with Xilinx's software takes place. And I, my suspicion is that if I buy that cable, I'll actually be able to do it on Linux as well. The reason that I currently came over to Windows is that this, uh, I can't remember the name, Tanagra, this thing only runs on Windows and it's closed source and so I can't like replicate it very easily. Uh, so those are some of my thoughts about developing with this board. I think this is one of the coolest development boards out there that I've found for also a pretty reasonable price. Um, but it does look like we may need to at least Right now in the short term, we may need to buy one of these JTAG cables to really use all the capabilities, but hopefully the open source community will keep pushing the development and eventually we won't need that anymore.